so, hi. Um, I took this picture at the last AR conference I've been to in uh, New York University. Do you notice something interesting about these speakers, like us, like you? The hand, what happened? Any ideas? Yes, I'm sorry, that's, uh, that con yes, it's the MIT one. Um, so I think it's actually their ideas. Because when we speak, when we express ourselves, like I'm, like I'm doing now, like swirling my ideas, supporting something, I'm actually using these invisible, invisible gestures that augment my body language. And it's something I see when I do this with my hands, you know, it's in my mind, and, and it's something that you don't see. <laughs> And this is something I think that would be quite amazing to change, if you would see these ideas around the speaker. Um, so I'm about to change this, hopefully, using Prezi as a platform. And uh, my name is Adam, I'm one of the founders of Prezi, as you have heard. And, and I really think this is a very powerful future because clearly there are lots of amazing use cases for augmented reality in, in you know, high-tech industries, etc. but we all do share ideas. And I think if we can augment our storytelling is just really mainstream and really powerful. So, um, just a few words about where this comes from. Actually, I used to be an architect and artist and have a very strange relation to augmented reality. I used to build tens and thousands of little pieces of electronics and glue them to buildings to make them augmented instead of getting goggles because back then when I started there were no goggles. And the motivation was the same, to, to make them open, to make them programmable, to make them something that the people can hack and change into. So that's my background. Then about a decade ago, we started Prezi, which is this presentation tool. And uh, it's a very nice, decent-sized startup now, one of the biggest in Europe with uh, 3 billion views. We had 85 million US investment as well, a big San Francisco office in Hungary and Riga as well. So it's very nice, but the, the thing that relates to this story is that Rock stars use Prezi and kids use Prezi and basically what we managed to do there that take this spatial visual storytelling form and squeeze it into such a simple model that anybody can do it. And that's what really motivates me, to create a new language that people can express themselves with. But you came here or maybe you stayed because he mentioned the Terminator. So I stopped talking about all the other things now and let's get to the Terminator. So I think there is actually a really funny challenge in front of us that is very visible even in this event. Um, and to, to highlight this challenge, I would like to take you to a little imaginary journey. Right? So imagine we're sitting in a place, right? We're having a nice conversation. It's probably a cafe to make it like really personal and casual. And then I, you know, just casually mention that favorite book that you read when you were a teenager. And then I start to hum the rock, rock you know, the, the top hit from the rock band that you love. And that you feel that this is just the, oh, my timer is not running. <laughs> No, this is not what you feel. So <laughs> what you feel is that this is just the most authentic human conversation you've ever been to, right? We just relate so much, except that it wasn't because I was accessing your browsing history through my goggles. I was checking what you were searching for to know what really resonates with you. I was trying to take advantage of you. And, you know, it wasn't really personal and human at all. Except you might say this won't happen because, you know, you know that I do this, so you can do the same. You can have goggles and you can access an even more deep, you know, browsing history subscription to your, to your provider. By the way, these history subscriptions you can already buy in the US, so this is not science fiction. It's just, you know, the time will come when we actually start to use them. So, you know, we get into this strange culture of looping suspicion. What actually do you see over my head? What I do see over your head? And what are you thinking about now? It's bad, no? Except you might say, this won't happen. Why? Do you remember the Google Glass thing? You remember how it was called in the US when it came out, the people wearing them? Glass holes? <laughs> it was socially so unacceptable. Um, the thing though is like, you know, this might, okay, so we're, we're good, right? So this, this is bullshit, there's nothing to worry about. The thing though is that I, I still remember that once things become a norm, these things change. Um, I remember when no mobile phones came became popular or where they started to become popular. In Hungary, we used to call them bot phones <laughs> because it was socially unacceptable to make phone calls in public. It was just so strange, right? And today, we're just happy and, you know, phoning around. So the thing is, it's actually up to us what kind of future we build. It's just, you know, we're not, we're not safe yet. And I think the challenge here is that if it's all about 
contextual information is the nice name to say spying. <laughs> of course, if it's a machine, it's fine, but if it's another human, I don't know. Terminator did this, if you remember, like walking around, everything is red, almost the color of blood, <laughs> and seeing who to kill. Um, there's like this really beautiful video done by Keiichi Matsuda, which depicts this horrible future that is in front of us using augmented reality, if you're not careful. And it's all about just, you know, covering up the neglected, sad urban spaces around us, making amazing shopping experiences of everything. <laughs> and you're just subject to this and you know, you're not, everything you see around you is a service, but it has nothing to do with the people who we encounter. And this is something we shouldn't do, I think. So what can we do is, here are some inspirations first that I think are actually quite relevant. Uh, so first from, from movie theater, like I don't know if you ever seen these movies, this is from Luis Buñuel, an old one. The two actresses, they, say, they play the same person and depending on the mood of that character, he just swaps even in the middle of a scene. It's quite powerful. It just confuses but it kind of makes sense. Then of course you've probably seen this movie, Fight Club, like it's the same person and the, the macho and you know the little shaky character expressed with two characters. Uh, this is played really well, I think, in anime. The faces of people in, in that style of art change massively to express what they feel. Because, you know, sometimes we feel more than what our facial muscles can show. <laughs> so I think this is actually exciting. Or here, this is an old one from 2014. This is a projection mapping. And it's, I think it's much more elegant than the apples make your fa face into a poop <laughs> thing. <laughs> But um, it's also a bit of a missed opportunity because she's more like a passive canvas, but I think we want to see her ideas and expressions more than just. But there is, there is a lot of possibilities here. So this is something I find quite amazing uh, that with this we can build a new language. And to do that, I think the important bit is that I would love to be in control of what you see about me. It's like my clothing, my expressions, my body language. I think it's up to me, not up to your service provider and spying software. <laughs> Um, so I think this is a nicer future, right? And how to get there, the thing we are trying to do with Prezi is to try to develop the language before the technology arrives. Technology arrives. So we all try the goggles, they are cool and they are getting there, but it will take a long time before it's a mainstream thing that, you know, they are not bulky, they don't disturb. So, it, you know, this is industrial use for the moment. And so what we are doing instead with Prezi is to try to go where people are today. Um, this is from Almost three years ago, we did a little augmented reality storytelling app called Nutshell. This is way before ARKit, so it's a bit slower, but you can do really beautiful little augmented reality stories and try to speak the language, you know, on a mainstream level. Um, um, then, then the technology you guys have seen on the main stage, we premiered it this year, and it's basically running Prezi as a mixed reality experience over the presenter. And the advantage we have there is that these visual stories are really, really easy to create. You know, this is not some high-end production thing. Um, a simple one I can do in an hour, like the high-end ones you have seen are Igor here, our amazing designer. He spent a day on each, but they were like amazing visuals and all that, right? So this is, this is really accessible and simple. Um, oh yes, of course, I have the fresh things if you miss them from the other stage. But basically, I think the, the magic that happens here is that the the speaker, her ideas, her body language, and the visuals that extend that, they become one experience for us. Of course, maybe it's a bit funny when you see both at the same time, and maybe this is better for remote things, we'll, we'll have to see. But I find this really motivating that, that uh, we can create something very accessible today using widely available technologies like laptops and cameras, and create these soon gesture controlled experiences that make people smile. They're like basically augmented mirrors that you can use to present and broadcast. And, and through this, they can all come up and come up with the visual stories that augment them, that express them, that help them express themselves. Um, I have a little demo as well. Um, if computers and everybody is friendly with me and the cables and the plug, then we'll be safe. Mm. I don't need this one.
Okay. So this is, oh, this is very funny because there's like this mirror of videos behind me, but <laughs> basically this is what you have seen. Um, I can talk about these monsters here and I use my body language to relate to them, which is like much more meaningful even without any technology augmentation, just using the basics of overlaying this spatial presence in a video. But then I can just like say, I like this monster or this monster, ah, this is nicer, I can oh, go inside. <laughs> Nice, so this is the abonymous snoreman, which is the enemy of all presentations in the world that makes people snore. And of course, I can go like, oh, this is like from the Matrix, but this is just disturbing now. And I give you a tip how to avoid being a snoreman presenter. Of course, use Prezi. <laughs> but you get the idea, right? It's a very simple thing, but it can be very powerful and, and widely accessible as of right now. This was what I wanted to share. You can see the code take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you have any questions, we still have a few minutes because I spoke very fast. I apologize for that. <laughs> Thank you.